guys, and welcome back to another episode of Total Control with Wesker. We're on a page that I actually forgot even really existed, this one, the Injury Table. Unfortunately, we're not winning many things this season, but we are in fact winning the Injury Table, and we top it at the moment with six first-team players that are injured. And when you look at that, that is horrendous. Musto, starting DM. Luisinho, starting left-back. Uh, Jorge Miramon, starting right back often. Uh, Ibrahim Amadou, also kind of a starting DM. Kyle Walker-Peters, also a starting right back. We are really missing a lot of key areas, particularly the fullbacks and the DMs. And honestly, I think that's kind of key to the way we play. Now, I think we did pretty well against Celta Vigo for the most part. And we're a bit unfortunate to come out with that with uh, only uh, a two undefeat. I think a draw would have been a fair result. But we screwed ourselves in the first 10 minutes of that match, basically. Um, and that's just one of those things. And I really do feel like hopefully we can get a couple of these guys back before obviously today it's got barcelona we're just going to try and go out there and see what we can come up with but it's the next two games afterwards that are absolutely crucial we need to get some of these guys back now musto ain't going to be back luisinho isn't going to be back miramon it's unlikely but amadou and walker peters hopefully those two at least will be back hopefully just amadou like amadou i think it's gonna be super important to get him back is going to be really important luisinho we need to get him back soon as well because i just don't trust jose angel but that's just kind of what we're working with at the moment and what's to say we won't get more injuries to be perfectly honest but also juan hernandez is back and i feel like we've been creating a lot of chances and i just want to see if we're still as far away from the top of the league on that as i thought we were 41 chances created. The nearest team after that has 30. We've created 11 more chances than anybody else. Literally, there are teams at the bottom where you could combine them and they haven't created as many opportunities as us. The point is, we should be further up the league based on purely that alone. And I feel like if Juan Hernandez can score a few more goals and have a better ratio than someone like Gallego, that could well be the difference between us staying up and going down. Our top scorer currently has four and that's not good enough. Juan Hernandez grabbed two goals in that game against Catafe. He finally looked like he was about to hit the ground running and then he's buggered off on international duty for like two months. But now we've got him back for the rest of the season. If we can keep him fit, I wonder if he could get into like double figures for the rest of the year and that well could be enough to save us, to be perfectly honest. Because we're capable of creating the opportunities, we're just not putting them away. And that to me is absolutely insane. This, this stat right here is crazy. Anyway, Barca today can do a bit of uh, light training this week to try to not exacerbate things. Although I do think there was just a little bit of bad luck on that one too. But even so, we're going to be extra careful. Dropping points today. Yeah, I mean, is it really dropping points today? They've got their fixture later. Yeah, that's right. It was nice to see Mango score his first league goal for us. That's, that's nice to see, though. Also, when it comes to things, I'm looking at ideas potentially for the beta. I know I did a video about that. And I'm looking at some different options. And I might just do something completely outside my normal wheelhouse and just do like a big club. Just for a bit. Just to try it out. Because I've never really done that on FM. And I don't want to do a full-term save with that. But I might do something like Chelsea or something. Just to see particularly as they've got a transfer embargo and it's a little bit more interesting than just doing a normal one but i just want to try out something a little bit different for my style so other games today not really that relevant to us hatafe sort of but not really also since it is the start of the week it's time to thank new patrons and that is jonathan lounders i completely forgot about this seriously thank you mate and thank you everyone that's still over there you have no idea how much that means to me particularly with the little break i took um, i'm really looking forward to getting stuck into things with fm20 do not worry about that. I'm not going anywhere. Although there will be a little bit break after this, but it's going to be I don't know, a few days, I would have thought, maybe a week at most, depending on when the beta drops. But seriously, thank you to everybody. That's awesome. Thank you to everyone that supported me over this year with FM19. I honestly cannot thank you enough. I realize there are plenty of other channels you could be watching right now. And maybe you should be, to be honest, because they're much better than me. But thank you for sticking around. That's really awesome. So we didn't get a lot of the ball against um, Celta, which is fair to say. We actually had less shots on target than them as well. Fairly important to note too. But I still think we were really decent after that first 15 minutes, or first 10 minutes rather, we were really decent. Juanpi again, he's had a couple of back-to-back -back poor performances, which I guess, you know, is fine. We can pull him out of that, hopefully, because he's not been great, but hopefully he can come around. Uh, focus of attacks, again, heavily on the right, a bit more on the left this time. Highest pass completion. I mean, look at that, Galan and Gaia, absolutely huge amounts down this left-hand side. And Gaia was, again, fantastic, but it shows you again that the um, the midfield wasn't really pulling its weight this time. Four key passes, all from that left-hand side from Gaia. And to me, Toure and Rivera, those kind of players need to be making more key passes and they're not. And that's what concerns me a little bit. Okay, so as it happens, Valladolid are actually playing away at Barcelona. So unless they pull a Viacano, they're probably still going to be below us come the end of the day. My big concern, though, is Batiste at home to Depot 2 of Alaves. That feels like the type of game that they're going to win. And I think this could put us in real trouble, to be honest. Let's go. Yep, I was afraid of that. Hesse has given them the win and that is a huge win for them. And that really does start to cut us adrift again. Barcelona only beat Valladolid 1-0, but at least they do beat them. Unfortunately, now things are looking very, very bleak down at the bottom once again. We are now six points from safety because clubs above us have just started picking up those little points. But the main thing really was dropping those points against Viacano. I think it was Viacano. 
that that was horrendous like that really could have made all the difference for us and kept us in the fight but now we are up against it again six points from safety so the key thing is we've got Levante coming up soon that is a home game that is a must win we've got Barcelona fine that's just a free hit but Levante at home after that is a must win match right training for the week um let's not have so much stuff here eh but it's certainly not particularly heavy by anyone's imagination I'm gonna go defensive shape for this one that one to be a defending defending corners one and we'll move this one to be a defending free kicks one just so we're not quite overdoing things but we want less of these honestly i want two chance i'm gonna put two more chance now we don't want too much actually we want a maybe a goalkeeping one maybe a goalkeeping distribution training one because i want to just sort of give the keepers a bit better. but chance conversion is our ultimate bugbear at the moment we're creating so many chances and just not taking them that's going to be the plan for the week leading up to the barcelona game it's a free hit essentially but it's also the worst thing about it is the levante game is midweek so we don't even get a rest after the barca game which we might actually sort this now um and make it so that we have our attacking movement training here. But that is quite literally it. And have recovery there. Because that's really all we can do coming up to the Levante game. Oh, now Willock's injured as well. Put another one on the list, eh? At least, if nothing else, we are not going down with a whimper. Like, we're not going to finish bottom by, like, 20 points like it looked like we were going to. We're giving it a go. Watch Leganes beat Sevilla now and just ruin my dreams. 2-0 defeat at home to Sevilla. That is a massive result for us, rather, because it keeps Leganes down at the bottom. Another one of their games in hand has gone by without them grabbing anything from it. We're still four points clear of them. They could still overtake us with two wins, but the point is they've got to get those wins, and they don't look like they're buying any wins anytime soon. Ten points from safety. Them and Valladolid look basically down. I know we've got the same amount of points as them, but our form has been so much better. It really, really has. I mean, look at this. Look at this. Injury risk update. Yeah, I mean, I know they're high, but like, what can we do? So Neymar's got a cold. We're going to have to send him home, otherwise it'll spread. Because, you know, honestly, we might be able to get... I don't know if... I think there must be another international break coming up at some point. And I think it could be after the Levante game. I feel like another friendly in there might not be such a bad idea because we can then use that to get a bit of morale back, particularly if we were to... Even if we were to win Levante game, to be honest, because the morale is really, really important. As you saw when we finally got that first win of the season, we went on a great run after that. I mean, we only lost one match in like six. And I think what's most frustrating is we showed against Girona that we were capable of putting in a top performance. When everybody basically, even without a proper striker, were fit, we were on fire. And then the moment that happened, we finally found our mojo, so to speak. The injuries hit us like a waterfall, and we really have been hampered by that ever since. I think we don't lose that game against um, Viacano if we've not got a million injuries. But shoot me now. Juanpi has now picked up an injury. Are you joking? We are just getting absolutely dicked on by injuries. And he's going to miss the Barca game. Which means it's probably going to be Tate Chong who starts against Barca. As long as Wampi's fit for Levante, that's all I care about. But this is getting insane. Pretty much press conference. I mean, what are they going to say? I'd consider us to be strong favourites. Um, it's going to be tough for us. It is. Okay, so we've got other games to start. And this is enormous for us. Viacano at home to Bilbao. Levante at home to Espanyol. And Valladolid at home to Girona. If all three of those home teams win, we are in real shit. Uh, like, honestly, let's just see. Thankfully, Viacano beat 3-0 at home by Bilbao. Good start. Levante, come on. Levante go and win 3-1 at home to Espanyol. And that is a horrendous result for us. But the worst one could be yet to come. And it does. Two goals for Guardiola and Valladolid beat Girona 2-0. And now we s this is not looking good at all. That really, really does not make for nice reading. We're back into 19th place in the league again. We can't just expect other teams not to get points. It's up to us to get them. Admittedly, today, that's going to be difficult. And unfortunately, it's only going to be difficult today even more so. We are going to hit early crosses. They'll like that. Probably low crosses too. Okay, they're not interested in that. Not interested in that. I might just leave it as it is in all honesty because it's Barca. Which is just as well, really, considering the amount of goals we've conceded this season and the amount of chances we've created. Right. Juanpi, I'm not risking him against Barcelona today. I'm, I'm just not. We need him for the game against Levante. As for this situation, that ain't happening, is it? It just isn't. However, oh, Aguilera's not registered, is he? And it's going to have to be Rivera again. I'm not sure whether I want to play Galan here this time around. I think that that was a bit of a mistake against cost I, I think that that didn't work for us in that game however he will come back into the starting 11 uh just not in that particular position and who do we play here i mean it has to be a car post still i know he's made some errors lately but i still have faith in the lad manga will not be starting up front though that is the role of juan hernandez the prodigal son finally returns to the starting 11 hopefully that's a miracle but today is not really the day for that is it as for the bench it's mango costas gaia nilmar walker peters amadou gallego these guys are only really there if we need them desperately mango will probably be the substitute striker if he comes on gaia on the left and we've got nilmar as well available as well as david costas if we need him although i did think he did all right in his debut to be fair right what Barca are gonna do oh it doesn't really matter does it but 
deep line playmaker, a couple of inside forwards. Obviously, they're going to be attacking like crazy. We know that. Let's just look at the analyst report, shall we? Play shot from a through ball. Not that there's a lot of them because they don't concede that many goals. Often late on, but they are vulnerable, I guess, to the system we play. They beat via the lead play in this same style. Particularly dangerous down the wings, it would seem. Which is completely understandable. What else do we know about them? So with that in mind, I mean... What do we do here? Look at the amount of red cards they've got, by the way. Like, they've got four red cards already this year, which, interestingly, could help us. Um, we're going to go after Messi as well. That kind of a bit blank like that and just kind of play it by ear because, unfortunately, it's Barca. We're going to struggle. But we're still going to play... Actually, we are going to tackle Suarez a bit harder. We're still going to play positive, though, and see what we can come out. There's no point in us trying to come here and defend for our lives. It's not going to happen, is it? So we might as well try and go here and score a goal or two, see if Juan Hernandez can score. We, you know, we scored a goal against them earlier this season. In fact, I think we got two. So it is definitely doable. But if we're honest with ourselves, we know this is going to be a tough one. And all we can really do is go out there and try our hardest and see what the guys are capable of coming up with. I think we'd struggle with a full strength side, let alone this lot. The only things that could potentially go in our favour is the fact that Galan is back where he should be and Hernandez is back in the team. Let's have this. Um, away at Barcelona. Just don't concede in like the first two minutes of the game. In the last couple of matches, I feel like the early goals conceded have really cost us. Get in for him. He's going to play him behind for Suarez any minute. Now Messi's literally just running straight through us here. Sure. Okay. Cool. There's the early goal. I I mean, I guess this is just one of those things where Messi is just Messi. He, he's just literally run completely past all of the defenders. I mean, okay. That, that's just, that's just Barca, isn't it? Unfortunately. I think what does concern me a little bit, though, is in a lot of other games, even ones we've lost where we've been playing at much, against much better sides, we've still... Oh my god, Chong! We've still looked threatening in places we've looked like we've got some bite to us even when we've come out on the wrong side of things lately we just look a bit toothless all of a sudden and i just think it's because the, the personnel has been forced to change so much we've already got three bookings and we've only committed we've committed four fouls and the referee has given us three yellow cards already brilliant jose hell on the overlap again it's probably gonna be a corner i'd say and chong i mean it's a good ball in and chong makes a decent run there is definitely something there potentially if we could just find the right ball dembele rakitic and it's in. They can basically score at will, it would seem. Every time they want to have a shot on target, it's going to be a goal. And it is now 2-0 to Barcelona. And we look absolutely crap. Um, but I suppose we are playing away against Barcelona. But it's the way that he's so... Look at this. Like, he's so easily able to find Rakitic with that ball. Rakitic with the on-running ball. Ah, there is. I'm not really sure what I'm complaining about. Because at the end of the day, what was I really expecting? I guess I was just expecting us to try. <laughs> I guess I was just hoping we'd put an effort in. Galan. Nicarpo. Straight back to him. Sergio. It doesn't help when everything goes in. Like, fair enough, they're obviously Barcelona, but it does kind of just feel like every time they have a shot now, it just goes straight in. Like, this isn't a super dangerous situation, but no, nope, it's still going in the back of the net. Good God, it's 3-0. I might actually press them more. I feel like we're giving them too much time on the ball now, and I think we need to hound them a little bit. I know it's gonna, it could end up costing us even more, but at this point, we've got nothing to lose. We're 3-0 down. Galan, go on, find that back post ball. Chong's making the run. Oh... They just refuse to put the crosses. What does hit early crosses mean? I'm confused. It feels like it should be a... Are you shitting me? We can't win, can we? And not that it's... We were expected to against Barca, but my God. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not making first half substitution. Uh, he's got half an hour under his belt and he's already injured again. My God. Like, fair enough. You could make the argument that maybe if we'd started on defensive, this doesn't happen. But I also don't think that it doesn't. I, I think that... It's Barcelona. If you can't try and defend purely against them, you're just going to cause even more problems for yourself, aren't you? So, yeah. <laughs> but I'm concerned about us getting a red card just because the referee is booking every single player that makes a foul, apparently. I've, I've turned it also off the press because I was worried about us conceding more fouls. And, yeah, in so doing, I just don't want us to get a red card from doing it. So if we turn down the press a little bit, hopefully it will help with that. Plus, we were losing possession anyway. It's cleared away. And it's come to Dembele. And, oh, my God. Why have we only got one player back from the corner now? Like, honestly, give me the reason. I always have two players. Is it because of the substitution we made? It has to be the substitution we've made. It's somehow mucked up my corner instructions. We always have two players back. It's always the right back and the left back. The only thing I can think of is because of the way that the substitution I've made, it's mucked up who's back from corners. And it always does this. Great save from Jovanovic. It's now 4-0. And for some reason, our left back was set to mark the goalkeeper. But I didn't change that. So why was he suddenly set to mark goalkeeper? Oh, you shitting me! 
this is insanity now. We've adjusted our... So it's not the training. It's just... We're just getting dicked on by the... That's the another injury. Um, uh, I don't... Um, what choice have we got? What choice? That's the third DM now that's gone down injured. Galant's had an awful day. I uh, don't know how, but we're going to get him off as well. Honestly, my, my main hope is that we don't lose two more players for that Levante game, to be honest. Because at this point, the injury situation is getting ridiculous. Get that ball out wide for Gaillard. Go on, lad. Get that ball in behind for Mango. Just make the run, mate. There you go. One touch. Can he finish it? No, he can't. Of course not. I mean, he made the run, which to be fair is more than Hernandez did. Not that he had a lot of time to do that. Oh, what a ball from Yaya Torre. Mango's just got the pace. He's going to have to try and win us a corner here. He's gone for... I don't know what that is. <laughs> he's got away with that in the past, to be fair. Mango again. Oh, he's actually through again. And he's got another shot away onto Steger. Mango has at least created some opportunity, or he's actually had some chances today. Um, and we've, again, created another two chances, this time against Barcelona. We, we're still a team that creates opportunities, it is fair to say. And we just lack any kind of impetus to put the ball in the net, is the main problem. Coutinho. Well, there you go. Barcelona 4, West Ham. Like, we didn't expect to win this game. You can play well and still lose, but I don't think we did, firstly. We created a couple of chances late on, which I think Mango probably could have done better with, but at least he made the run to create those opportunities for us. You know, it's another couple of half chances. And again, Gaillard probably did all right since he came on, to be honest. And Toure, I still think he was reasonably good. Amadou as well. Um, but unfortunately, the injuries have cost us again. Too many yellow cards in this game as well, considering. Like, <laughs> we got four players booked out of 7,000 the first half. It is Barca, though, so you just kind of got to accept that's going to happen, unfortunately. And maybe we could have lost 3-0 if we played defensive. But I always like to give it a crack because I'd rather have the players potentially scoring goals. Um, although we have now conceded 41 of them this season, so there's that. But let's just check the injuries. Watch them be bad. Oh, yep, they are both injured. Always good. Rivera, 11 days. So that's going to be Levante. Miss. Juan Hernandez. He's going to miss the Levante game as well. Good. Good. Ah, uh, it's just one of those things, really. Defensively, we've been shocking. Considering we have those two... We, I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it, as well? We literally have two brilliant performances uh, and get ourselves a clean sheet in both matches, then suddenly hit by a raft of injuries and we go and concede nine goals in the next three games because we've got no bloody defenders um, or defensive players in general. And I don't think it's going to get any better at home to Levante next, but we're going to give it a bloody good crack. But unfortunately, I just don't think we're going to have the squad anymore. I think we're just going to be rotating around players so much because we've got so many injuries that by the time one player comes back, the other one's been overworked and is then going to get out injured too. And even with the reducing the training, we're now getting the injuries in the matches instead. And I think that this could well be the death of our season would be the injuries. But maybe we can still turn this one around. We're going to keep on fighting. Levante is, is absolutely enormous next. So yeah, if you've enjoyed this episode, in spite of that, drop a like, that'd be gorgeous. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. I'll see you guys very soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.